You were talking about the monetary uh, funding and uh, the, the euro as a strong adversary to the euro. Uh, what future can you predict the currency has? Okay. The euro cannot survive as it's currently constructed. You cannot put together countries as different as Greece and, 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 and Germany together in a single economic and monetary union. Now, the solution to the problem is there's talk in Brussels of turning the European Union into a debt union. I don't think politically countries in Northern Europe, countries like Finland for example, who've got good public finances, are going to be prepared to say we will take on the debt of Spain or the debt of Greece. This is just politically impossible. Now one of two things will happen. Either uh, countries like Portugal, Greece and Ireland will one by one peel off and leave the euro, uh, which would then leave the eurozone to effectively become a greater Deutschmark zone, or there will be a revolution, a democratic revolution in Germany. And my goodness me, we've got the president of Germany, we've got the president of the Bundesbank all saying that the bailouts are illegal under the treaties, this should not be happening, that democracy is being put to the sword. You know, it's not impossible that Germany could make an announcement and, 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 and say, we're going to leave the euro. So it's very difficult to predict uh, exactly what will happen, but that this cannot work, well, I, th I, I think, is very easy. Well, Britain still stay out of the euro. Oh, Lord, yeah, absolutely. I mean, thank goodness we didn't join. Um, yeah. other, otherwise, we'd have been the same as the Irish. We were being told by the proponents of the euro it would give us cheaper mortgages. Well, it would have done. It would have given us interest rates much lower than they, sh than they should have been, so our boom and bust would have been even worse. Now, I think as far as the UK is concerned, the currency is a settled issue. You, um, and a vast majority of British businesses too say, look, we just don't need this. And anyway, the world's changing. You know, Europe is not the beginning, middle and end of everything. We're living in a global arena. Uh, and we've all got to start thinking more broadly than just Europe. And do you still think that Spain is next in this uh, bad well, line? Of, and all the way... Italy? All the way through the Euro crisis, I've, I've made predictions that have come right, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not about to make one uh, that won't come right. It's a possibility that Spain... Italy. Well, if we get to that, and we get to a country of 60 million people, you know, you know the fourth largest that, economy... That's there, then, then we have a problem. Uh, well, well, then we have a problem. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the bailout fund at the moment is 440. Um, uh, experts say actually it would need to be four times that size if you have to start taking on countries like Spain and Italy. So I just just from the top. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure which is the next domino to go, but I, I guess if you if you put me up against a wall and said name name it, I would guess Spain is probably the most likely. Uh, is there a chance that more countries like uh, Denmark, like Denmark, is uh, now convinced uh, of will abandon the Schengen? Well, I think that when you've got bad times economically, rising unemployment, and, and, and tensions, I mean, look, in Spain, youth unemployment, and I'm not making this up, youth unemployment in Spain is 46%. Now, in an environment like that, if you have a total open door uh, to people from very, very poor Eastern European countries and they come into a country like Spain and they're perceived to be taking jobs at a time of high unemployment, you know, that, is such a, that is such a dangerous combination that governments tend to react to it. So I think Schengen's days are numbered as well, yes. What about the next enlargement of the European zone, like Croatia and, and, and so on? Can you predict? Something? Well, empires need to continually expand. You know, what, once Roman an empire, empire, yeah, once an empire stops expanding, it begins to contract. Um, and and these guys have put half a century into building their European state. They don't want to give it up now, and that is why the battle for accession in Croatia is actually rather more important than people in Croatia themselves probably realise. I mean, already it's being championed in Brussels. When Croatia joins, that will show that the union is still very attractive. If the people of Croatia want to join, that's fine, but they must be an open, honest debate, and, and a referendum that is conducted fairly. Is there a way to better our stance with the Union, in some ways, before the referendum, before the enlargement? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I mean, I would have thought that um, it would be better and fairer 
to have a referendum before, before the government signs the documents. That, to me, would be a much better way round of doing it, but it was clear from um, Mr Plenkovich today that they have no intention of doing that. What are they going to do to the Croatian people? They're going to say, look, it's, it's, it's a done deal already. Yeah, we are joining. Take it all. Basically, yeah. basically. And, 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 and I, I, I got no reassurance today. Um, that there was going to be a fair campaign. I mean, he actually said, we have experts paid for by EU institutions telling us the truth. Well, they've got a vested interest, these people. I mean, it's nonsense. Sure. And uh, at the end, uh, what should the normal Croatian citizen worry about most when deciding how to vote in the country? Well, I think, I think that here you are, you're just 20 years into being an independent, self-governing nation. However bad you think your government is, whatever corruption scandals they may be, you can sort that out yourself in this country. Don't give away independence, self-respect and pride to a failing set of institutions in Brussels. Don't do it. Thank you.